your host and guide for the evening. It's a very weird job I have. I'm a woman who comes out here to make men laugh who are here to see women take their clothes off. Easier job for a man. And a tricky balancing act for me. But not as tricky an act as Sandy, our stripping contortionist, who uses a common household plunger to balance her. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Just don't leave before seeing it. <laughs> and what am I supposed to talk about in between strippers, huh? Baseball? Kittens? Grandparents? I mean, how do you keep a starving man's interest when you're performing between a chocolate donut and a cheeseburger? Not that you're all paying attention to me. See these guys right here? These guys are ignoring me and just talking to each other. What are they talking about? Just stuff you'd expect at a joint like this. I can hear them, so let me recreate the conversation. You know what I hate worse than being stuck in traffic when you gotta piss real bad? The fact that Aristotle relied so much on opinions based on non-scientific reasoning. I disagree. I believe a person can reason perfectly well in circumstances where we cannot claim to have scientific understanding, so I defend the philosopher Aristotle. Jesus Christ, you and your fucking Aristotle. It's Aristotle this and Aristotle that. You know, he buggered young boys. It was a different time, don't you know? You can't apply modern standards to ancient figures. Sidebar, Jim, Miriam Maisel, how do you even know all this stuff about Aristotle? You seem very girly with your pretty makeup and your fashionable hairstyle and your Park Avenue heels. And I say, well, my father would read Aristotle to me as a child, and I absorbed facts about the old fart, even though I don't know what the fuck any of it fucking means. <laughs> Didn't mean to interrupt. Thank you! See you in a few. You know, my father once said to me, if you're going to have a voice, you better be careful what that voice says. Now, he was talking about anti-Semitic Nazis. He's always talking about anti-Semitic Nazis. Two anti-Semitic Nazis walk into a bar, and one says to the other, who does your taxes? But a voice... <laughs> But a voice is a powerful thing. It can shine a light on something that is hiding in the dark. It can make a couple of guys sit when they want to go. Yeah, bring it, out. it can change the way people think, which can change the way people act. But it can't do anything if you keep your mouth shut. Well, lesson f***ing learned. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Rough week. Women. Huh? You can't live with them? You can't. Well, that pretty much sums it up. You can't live with them. Huh? My wife. Oh, brother. She saw a psychic and told her that in a past life she was Mary Queen of Scots. I said, well, hope you had a good time, honey, because in this life you're Mary Queen my socks. <laughs> the wife is... She says she wants a job. Can you believe that? I says to her, sweetie, you got two jobs already that you never show up for. Hand and blow. <laughs> I dedicate that one to my man, Bobby. Cut her mic. Cut the spotlight. That was the sweet, saintly Philomena. Heavenly, wouldn't you say? Cover my fucking head. <laughs> and that was Philomena's foul-mouthed friend, Philadelphia. Take it off. Sweet thought, but I think I'll keep it up. By the time I finish unzipping, unfastening, and unhooking the medieval contraption of rayon and rubber that is my girdle, you'll all be back in bed with your wives telling them how much you hated working late. <laughs> oh, you didn't say you were going to throw an oily, crumpled dollar bill at me. Now it's coming off. Yeah. Oops, no time. Hey, guys, I'm curious. How many of your wives know you're here tonight? <laughs> Little news for you. All of them. And how? Laundry. Because laundry is the diary of your day. One sniff of your shirt, they can smell Lucy, your Lucy secretary. They can smell the horse track, the cigars with the boys, the cigars with Lucy. And they can definitely smell this place. <laughs> Plus, they go through your pants and wallets at night while you're asleep. They know everything. They just pretend they don't. And why? because they've got their own secret lives. Oh, you don't think your wife has a life you don't know about? Your wife is home, alone, all day long. You know who else is around your house all day long? Milkmen, mailmen, handymen, salesmen. You know how many products there are to sell out there? 
come home one day and there's a brand new vacuum cleaner? I mean, you had a perfectly good one when you left in the morning, but then ding dong, hi, I'm handsome. <laughs> Wanna reach those hard to reach spots? I've got an expandable attachment that you're gonna love. Hey, I think I paid you to stand there. Customers, drinks, go. And you want her to have that secret life, trust me. Cause if she didn't, with all that she knows about yours, she'd spend those lonely nights sitting there thinking, how long would I have to hold this pillow over his face before his breathing stops? <laughs> I can answer that, ladies. Three minutes. Two and a half if he smokes. John F. Kennedy is running for president. I know. It's great, right? We'll have a young, smart, handsome president, and boy, is he going to be busy. Have you read his platform yet? He's got a six-point health care plan that includes everything from building new hospitals to spiffier paper gowns and turning the heat on so you don't freeze your tush off in the examining room. <laughs> He's gonna give more money to NASA and we are gonna send a man to the moon before the Soviets. <laughs> All these things sound wonderful. What could possibly be the downside of him winning? What should we, every single woman in this room, be very, very afraid of? This. <laughs> If he wins, this is going to be the first lady. Can you imagine? You wake up, your hair in curlers, pillow creases on your face, and you sit down at the table and pick this up and see that face first thing in the morning. I mean, really? Is that fair? And it's not just the face, or the clothes, or the poise. I mean, didn't they invent the word poise just to describe this woman? Can you picture Jackie Kennedy having a bad hair day? Or chip nail polish? Can you imagine her with mustard on her shirt? Or with cramps? Now, Pat Nixon, that woman has cramps. Probably every single day. I'm sure Pat's a very nice lady, but I feel like I know what she looks like after a night with her in-laws. Exhausted, slightly drunk, full of resentment, and suddenly realizing the ice pick can be used on something other than ice. But not Jackie. Her in-laws love her. They eat her roast and bring her flowers. She's fluent in French, Spanish, and Italian and Yiddish. I have no proof about the last one, but I still believe it's true. <laughs> do we really want a first lady who looks like this on a horse? Or do we want a first lady who looks a little more like the horse? <laughs> I mean, an attractive horse. I'm talking buttermilk, not drink. <laughs> we women are dealing with a lot. Right. Do we really need to be constantly comparing ourselves? So come on. <laughs> who has that kind of perfect facial expression while they're at the beach? Where's the sunburn? The sweat stains? Where's the grape soda stain from her daughter throwing up on her after the first time she swung her around in the ocean? Where is the look on Jackie's face that says, if I just let go right now? You ready to see seconds count with Sophie Lennon? That's too bad, because this is a cooking show. Who likes salmon casserole? No, no, you're in the right place. So, a couple of things to keep in mind today. No smoking, no snacking, and when that red light goes on, it means the Russians are invading. <laughs> or we're rolling, one of the two. Both are pretty exciting. And when Sophie comes out, I'm gonna need you to yell like your hair's on fire. And if at any point your hair really is on fire, the exits are there and there. Boy, good looking crowd today. You two look like you're in love, am I wrong? We're engaged. Oh. Exciting. And do you want kids right away? Uh, I, I think so. Yes. Great. Well, I've got two for you. Their names are Ethan and Esther. I'll have them bathed and delivered to you. Just feed and water them regularly. <laughs> nice doing business with you. <laughs> Everyone nice and lubricated out there? How you doing in the cheap seats? Oh, yeah. All right. Now, I just want you to think about something. Especially you with your hand precariously close to your crotch there. <laughs> Every girl you see working tonight, shaking their money makers, has a father. That's right. Me too, I have a father. Goes by Abraham. He thought I'd grow up to be the perfect lady. And here I am, slinging dick jokes in a strip club to a bunch of drunk men with various degrees of syphilis. So, happy Father's Day! That's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it's been a night you will never forget. You've been a great audience. Please get home safe. Don't forget to tip the waitresses. They're armed. I'm Mrs. Maisel. Thank you and good night! <laughs>